个同学，大家早上好。那个噪声比较大，嗯，那么今天我们很高兴呢，就是邀请李宝安教授啊，给我们做这个 Open Seminar 的第九场报告，也是他的这个报告系系列报告的第三讲。那么前面呢，我们前面两讲这个好多人也听到李宝安老师的这个关于对称能力跟核反应啊这方面的一些关系。那么今天呢，他讲第三讲主要是跟中子型啊这些呃相关的一些一些事情。大家很熟悉，这个他是农工大学的呃教授，也是我国际上著名的理论物理、理论和物理学家，是美国物理学会的会士。那么，特别是他近些年来啊，对我们中国和物理的好多的合作的，都是跟法案的工作都相关。那么，呃，这次呢是由我们复旦大学和科学系跟现代物理研究所主办。那么，有和和科学与技术 （Nuclear Science and t e c h n i c a l 这个杂志呢来协办。那么，呃，欢迎大家呢，在这个疫情期间啊，呃，通过网上来这个这个这个参加李宝安教授的报告。啊，宝安。教授，现在开始，请你开始。OK， 嗯，好，呃，谢谢玉刚，谢谢各位来来参加呃我的报告。哦、oh, ，OK， so today um we will focus on symmetry energy and the properties of neutron stars and their collisions. Um, I would like to um focus on the following uh four topics. First, we will discuss briefly where, why, and how the symmetry energy. Effects properties of neutron stars. Then、uh, we'll discuss briefly about the gravity, equilibrium state, degeneracy, and the role of high density symmetry energy、uh, in neutron stars. Then、uh, I would like to discuss about its、uh, symmetry energy extracted from observation of neutron stars since、uh, the first、uh, detection of gravity waves from、uh, neutron star emergers since GW 1708 17. Uh, in particular, we'll discuss、uh, what we have learned about the slope curvature of symmetry energy and the symmetry energy at two times、uh, normal density. Then we'll discuss、uh, what we can learn about the symmetry energy from the latest observation of the most massive neutron stars by a、uh, nicer collaboration. Then we'll discuss about the nature of the second component of、uh, this is GW 1908 14. Uh, as a super fast uh, uh, powder, uh, then we'll you know, look forward about uh, you know, what we can learn about symmetry energy from future high precision、uh, X-rays or high frequency gravity waves. Okay, so、um, well, since、um, you know neutron stars are far away,、uh, we don't really know. Uh, exactly what's inside a neutron star because we have only few、uh, observables. So people have speculated, imagined the structure of neutron star is similar to the structure of Earth. But if you look at the、uh, compactness, which is defined as a ratio of mass over radius, the compactness of neutron star is about a, a billion times the compactness of Earth. Therefore, the you know neutron stars is super dense. There are, man, there are many interesting questions, starting from the magnetic field in the atmosphere uh, and the composition of atmosphere to the you know content of the crust uh, to the core. There are many interesting questions at its、uh, in its area of、uh, neutron stars. So we are going to、uh, focus on. A few possible effects of symmetry energy in different areas, different locations of neutron stars.、Um, well, now before I go further, I want to first confess that I'm not an expert on neutron stars. You know, although I have been learning about neutron stars from my students, postdocs, collaborators, you know, other people, including some of you.、Um, um, Also, many of you may have noticed there are many interesting papers posted almost every day, and I'm unable to follow,、uh, you know, many of the interesting papers.、Um, and as you are going to see in, in my talk, in some of the works,、um, you know, I'm involved, 
we use most of the time the simplest model of neutron stars. Assuming neutron stars are made of neutrons, protons, electrons, and muons. We are going to focus on the effects of uh, symmetry energy. I would also like to uh, point out that it, you know, in China, there are many uh, leading experts on neutron star physics, and some of them have studied in detail about the symmetry energy. At least it did, uh, several of them. Um, well, I had the honor of uh, reviewing the first two review articles, and then I like them very much. I strongly encourage you to read those two uh, those papers. And also there are several uh, more extended uh, recent uh, reviews uh, involving uh, several uh, people in China, like uh, uh, Wei uh, Jinbiao uh, at Fudan, uh, Li Jiajie in, in Chongqing, and uh, uh, Professor uh, Ma, Ma Yongliang in, uh, in Hangzhou. Uh, they covered many of the interesting topics related to uh, neutron stars and they all uh, discuss in detail some aspects of symmetry energy and the effect of symmetry energy on neutron stars. Okay, so why are uh, we can see effects of symmetry energy? There are several major uh, main places where symmetry energy come in. The first place is um, the content, the proton uh, fraction in the core of a neutron star uh, at beta equilibrium. Uh, the proton fraction in neutron star, this X, is uniquely determined by the density dependence of symmetry energy. And you, 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 uh, you can also see that uh, some of you may know that uh, this proton fraction affects the cooling mechanism of uh, proton neutron stars. It also affects the associated neutrino emission, the neutrino flux, the appearance of high prongs like lambda, sigma, uh, pain condensation, uh, formation of bion resonance, and many other uh, you know, uh, properties of uh, neutron stars. The next most important place where symmetry comes in is in calculating the pressure of neutron star matter at the beta equilibrium. It has an important contribution here uh, from the symmetry energy. This last term is coming from the electron contribution. It's also related to symmetry energy through the charge uh, uh, neutrality uh, requirements. Uh, the next place here is the transition density and pressure from the core to the crust. Uh, if you um, calculate the so-called incompressibility of neutron star matter in the core, that incompressibility may um, become uh, zero. At that point, the dynamical instability will grow forming uh, clusters. You know, that's where you find, I mean, the cross is where you find the clusters. So this condition will determine the transition density and pressure from the core, from the uniform core to the uh, cluster matter in the crust. As you can see in this uh, um, expression for the incompressibility of neutron star matter, it involves the curvature of uh, symmetric epiton state, uh, the curvature of symmetry energy, and also the slope of symmetry energy. This last of two terms related to the slope of symmetry energy more or less uh, control out. So the dominating factor is going to be the curvature of uh, symmetry energy. And many people have uh, illustrated uh, this effect. Before I, I show you an example, I want to remind uh, some of you here, some of the parameters that we're going to use throughout uh, this uh, discussion tonight, uh, today. The K naught is the incompressibility of symmetric matter. J naught is the spoonies of the symmetric nuclear matter epiton state. The L is the slope of symmetry energy, K sim is the curvature of symmetry energy, and J sim is the spoonies of symmetry energy. These are- <laughs> Yeah, this L is the slope of symmetry energy, and this J sim is the uh, spoonies of symmetry energy. We're going to you know, oh. use these parameters in describing, characterizing the epiton state. So um, as I mentioned, uh, many people have calculated the transition density from the core to the crust. This transition density uh, depends on the air parameter. If you fix the compressibility, the spoonies, I mean the compressibility of symmetric matter. The transition density actually 
you know, increase, uh, you know, a little bit as you increase the density or fix uh, compressibility of the symmetric matter. And, the, and it decreases with the increasing uh, compressibility of symmetric matter. So if you plot, look at it, the contour, uh, plot of the transition density in the plane of curvature and slope of symmetry energy, you see this, uh, you know, the transition density from uh, 0.15, you know, very close to saturation density of symmetric matter to about 0.09 or you know, 0 0.7 or so. This is the reading where uh, many you know, uh, predictions using uh, scrum hardy folk or relative mean field model have given you transition density in, in this uh, area. So the point that I want to emphasize is that it, uh, the transition density is mostly determined by the curvature of symmetric energy. You have seen probably in some literature people emphasizing that the transition density decreases with increasing slope. That's because they only use the air to characterize the symmetry energy without telling you what is the uh, compressibility. So if you look both, you find that it is actually the curvature of symmetry energy uh, determining mostly the transition density. Now, um, then let's look at what you know, uh, where the symmetry energy comes in the curve of um, uh, neutron stars. Well, um, about 20 years ago, at the beginning of this century, the U.S. National Research Council surveyed many uh, physicists around the world. They identified 11 greatest unanswered questions in physics. Of course, you find things like, uh, what is dark matter? What is dark energy? You know, how did the universe begin? You also find questions like, what is gravity? You know, was Einstein right uh, about the, uh, you know, general relativity? You know, what's the applica application uh, range of general relativity? Also, there are questions like, uh, uh, are protons unstable? Uh, are there new states of matter at an exceedingly high density and temperature? Now, we're going to discuss uh, today the idea, you know, neutron stars, uh, are natural laboratories to investigate some of these questions. You know, in particular, the question about what is gravity, you know, are there a new state of matter at an exceedingly high density? We're going to, uh, to investigate where the high density symmetry energy may play an important role in answering some of these uh, questions. So, um, now in uh, neutron stars, it's uh, at the uh, uh, hydrodynamical equilibrium. It's basically the balance between gravity and the equiton state. So when you write down the total action of the system, the action has a gravity part, has a matter part. And then when you apply Hamiltonian's uh, uh, variational principle to derive the equation of motion of your you know, general degree of freedom the, the fields, uh, you have the freedom of modifying either the gravity, namely you can you know, uh, choose between you know, general relativity or one of the modified uh, gravitational series, or you can modify the matter content. You can add the dark matter, dark energy, um, and it doesn't matter you know, which one you, 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 know, you modify as long as your total action is the same, you, know, you, you may get the same answer. So we have this, uh, uh, gravity equivalent state uh, degeneracy in describing uh, dense uh, matter here. And we have discussed uh, during the last two uh, um, seminars, the high density symmetry energy is one of the major uncertainties in the equation of state of dense neutron rich matter. So we expect to see effects of high density symmetry energy in breaking uh, this degeneracy. Now here I have uh, um, an example uh, from uh, a group uh, in uh, Arizona. A few years ago, they started the mass readers correlation using general relativity and a couple of modified gravitational uh, theories using uh, two uh, equivalent state as a boundary, the steep equivalent state, the soft equivalent state. Uh, then you are predicted uh, rings of mass over uh, radius is here. This is, uh, mainly due to the uncertainty of, of equivalent state. But if you, uh, you, know, you, you have an open mind uh, to consider other uh, gravitational theories, then you see that it, the uncertainty due to gravity is much larger than uh, that due to the uncertainty of equivalent state. Um, 
Well, this um, this review in 2008 is very uh, comprehensive. Has many interesting information about the you know different kind of bioeducational series. But I would like to recommend you to read this excellent uh, brief review uh, by Professor uh, Sao Li Jing uh, at the uh, uh, Peking University. Uh, he saw here using different uh, you know, uh, equivalent states. These are among the most popular equivalent states we have in nuclear physics using uh, uh, you know, both general relativity and uh, one of the uh, scalar tensor series to calculate mass reverse correlation. Uh, he pointed out that uh, there is a distinct feature when you calculate a mass reverse correlation using this uh, scalar uh, tensor theory. It solves a little bump here, okay, for massive neutron stars. Um, of course, this bump is relatively small. We, we need a very high precision uh, measurement in order to distinguish uh, such kind of uh, difference. Um, he also pointed out, uh, as other people have also uh, illustrated this one, the, this deviation difference between different series depends on the parameters you use in the mitral gravity coupling uh, fun function. In particular, here you have this R front node and base node. Those are two parameters involved in this uh, uh, mitral gravity uh, coupling uh, function. Um, well, a few years ago, uh, He Xiaotao studied also the mass reader's correlation by using uh, GR general relativity and uh, the similar kind of scalar tensor uh, theory. Using a set of uh, equivalent states, they all have the incompressibility of symmetric mitral of about 231 MeV, but having different slope parameter and different high density behavior of symmetry energy. You see that above 1.4 solar mass, the prediction using GR and uh, this scalar tensor theory uh, splits, just like the previous slide I saw you from, from Professor Sao. But um, you see that, okay, this radius uh, depends sensitively on the slope parameter of symmetry energy. So uh, again, in order to distinguish this um, uh, different radii for high V mass neutron stars, due to different gravitational series. We need to measure precisely the radii of massive neutron stars. Now, last time some, uh, I think uh, Professor Ma at uh, Shanghai asked me if the symmetry energy can you know, go down as you increase density. Yes, it can. Uh, here is an example. Um, and there are actually uh, some uh, experimental indication this might be the case. Um, of course, there are still um, some uh, controversies uh, model dependence. Well, back in uh, 2009 or so, uh, when uh, Zigang, um, Lie Wen, uh, Ying Guochan, and Zhang Ming, when we analyzed the pi minus pi plus ratio data from the 4P collaboration at the GSI, we found that the, the data the GISI data uh, prefers a symmetry energy corresponding to this uh, right line, which had the symmetry energy goes like this. This is the you know, super soft symmetry energy predicted by the original Gongli Hartree Folk um, uh, approach. Um, of course, um, you know, after our paper was published, some other people can reproduce our results, uh, like Xie Wen and, and uh, uh, some of his collaborators, but some other groups couldn't. So we still have this uh, strongly model dependence. And also, uh, if you look at the symmetry energy at a home density from using different uh, observables from the, the flow uh, analyzed by uh, the EOS, uh, the um, uh, people uh, at, at GSI, they found the symmetry energy could be increasing like this one. But I, you know, I indicated that from pi minus pi plus ratio from Zikang's analysis goes down. So we still have this large uh, uncertainty. It's model dependent, also dependent on the observable. And you know, the community has been trying to, to work, you know, to sort out this uncertainty by, you know, comparing transport models and also, you know, taking more data at other places. And these things are still uh, going. Now. Um, 
One question you may ask right now is, uh, when you have a symmetry energy like this, can you support uh, two solar mass neutron stars? But the answer is no, okay? Just with this symmetry energy, we cannot support uh, two solar mass neutron stars. But I, you know, I mentioned uh, earlier, you know, you have the opportunity to modify the total action of your system. You can modify gravity of the epiton state. So, you, you know, if, if we can really be sure the symmetry energy, you know, goes down with the equilibrium density, then, you know, maybe we can look into the possibility of have modified the gravity. Um, the simplest modified gravity theory is the, the so-called non-Newtonian gravity theory based on some theories. The, um, the gravity is uh, not just one or R square, but you may have a little term here, okay? With, uh, you know, modify the short range behavior of uh, gravity. Corresponding to this one, you can introduce uh, a Yukawa term in the gravitational potential. So if you, um, uh, you want to reduce your, uh, um, you know, gravity to counterbalance a uh, reduced uh, symmetry energy or equilibrium state, you can uh, use, uh, uh, for instance, um, a vector uh, U-Bodan, which uh, will, um, you know, will uh, lead to a negative uh, term here. Then uh, it will modify your gravity, um, the strengths of uh, gravity. And uh, this picture has been uh, proposed by uh, study in detail by uh, Fuji. Um, he was saying that, you know, considering your total action had a mitre part, had a gravity part, you can just keep using uh, general relativity, but then modify your mitre content by considering the u boson exchange between you know, two, uh, two particles. Then the energy density is going to be proportional to there is a coupling constant, there is a mass of the, this U boson. And this picture was also used by uh, Feisler's uh, group in, in Germany in studying uh, neutron stars. You know, we kind of borrowed this idea in studying um, uh, you know, neutron stars when we have a super soft uh, symmetry energy. Uh, so I thought you that we need a symmetry energy goes down like this in order to reproduce the pi minus pi plus ratio. This uh, symmetry energy will give you a pressure that's uh, you know, decreasing with increasing energy density, so it has a dynamical instability. But if you ate the contribution from this uh, u boson, which uh, you know, it will be positive like this, you can uh, increase your uh, you know, pressure from your, your nuclear mitre. Then you, know, you can uh, you know, easily support uh, your two solar mass neutron stars. We found that to support uh, 1.4 solar mass neutron stars, you need, need this coupling constant to be around 50 uh, you know, over uh, GeV squared. So you know, we can solve this, uh, uh, you know, get out of this trouble. Um, this similar idea has been uh, used uh, in the last couple of years by the group uh, of Professor Zheng uh, Xiaoping in uh, Wuhan. They uh, look at the uh, effect on uh, you know, strange quark stars and they uh, further use uh, the observational data from uh, uh, neutron stars or gravity waves, try to constrain the, the, the coupling constants. So when they look at it, the mass re radius relationship for uh, string quark matter, they found that uh, uh, in order to reproduce the radius measurement from uh, gravity waves or nicer, uh, uh, they need a g square over mu square this coupling constant uh, here uh, around uh, you know five point seven or so. This number is much smaller than the one that you, we found earlier uh, to support a neutron star with a super soft symmetry energy. So there are obviously some interesting questions we need to uh, sort out. But it's interesting to see that it, you know this idea can be used uh, you know to support uh, you know the the softening of uh, a neutron star with a strangeness. Now, let me move on to the measurement of gravitational waves. Uh, according to the textbook, when you have two test masses at location x, a, x, b, they have a separation of air. 
when you have a gravitational waves passing through there, the, the space time get uh, you know, uh, 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 disturbed. You have the um, H here is the stream amplitude of your uh, displacement in uh, proper separation. In the wave form of the stream ampli uh, uh, amplitude, uh, this uh, phase angle phi, okay, which is a function of time t, this phi, uh, phase angle phi contains information about the equation of states uh, in this matter. So when you have two uh, neutron stars spiraling you know, towards each other, the total quotable moment has uh, two parts. You have the orbital part due to the, you know, the, the quotable uh, form of the, the orbit. You also have a term, this QIZ, which is due to the, the polarization of this neutron star uh, by the gravitational field uh, created by the other uh, neutron star. This code for moment is proportional to the local uh, gravitational field. The coefficient in front of it is the, related to the tidal polarizability of this uh, neutron star. And this lambda is the one that's going to go into the phase angle of the Fourier transformed to stream amplitude. This is the thing that people detract from uh, observations. So by you know, starting fitting the waveform, one can infer this um, phase angle due to the tidal uh, deformation. And from there, uh, one can we can use that to constrain the equation state. So, um, well, Back in 2013, that's you know, a few years before the first detection of graphene waves. When uh, Faru was working with me in Texas as a postdoc, he calculated the effects of high density symmetry energy on the tidal polarizability of neutron stars. So he purposely constructed two equivalent states, which has uh, the same symmetry energy uh, below and around the normal density, but they have very different. Uh, high density behavior of symmetry energy. So there is a you know, difference here in symmetry energy. This difference in symmetry energy can be translated directly into the difference in the stream, in, in the tidal polarizability uh, of neutron stars. You know, for this uh, 1.4 solar mass neutron star, you see this difference, okay? So there is a direct connection between the high density symmetry energy and the tidal polarizability of neutron stars. Now, the data has been uh, analyzed by many groups. Uh, by 2019, there were already like 20 different analyses. Uh, these two are two independent analyses of the original uh, data from LIBO collaboration. Um, they, well, okay, they inferred the, title, the scale of the tidal polarizability had a maximum value of about 580 with a minimum level about the 70. And this reduced scaled tidal polarizability um, is related to the radius in, in this uh, more or less like uniform uh, relationship done by many uh, groups. So if you now see, you see the cross here with the upper limit here, this will give you an upper limit for the radius. This uh, point here will give you a lower limit. But most of the analysis if you uh, read this, about 12 kilometers for neutron star, the LIGO collaboration, these two independent analysis, give you an upper limit of about 13.6 kilometers for uh, neutron stars involved in, in the, um, uh, this GW, uh, I mean, the first neutron star uh, murder. They have masses around 1.4. So this basically give you a constraint on the radius of uh, canonical neutron star with 1.4 uh, solar mass. Okay, now with the radius of a 1.4 solar mass inferred from um, gravitational waves or from earlier analysis of these low mass X-ray uh, binaries, we can use them as a data in a basin uh, analysis. Of course, we imagine several different cases for instance, you know, we imagine a case with, uh, with a different uh, mean value of the radius and uh, the same uncertainty values because the observation gives you different uh, uncertainties. We also imagine a case with just a single number and, to, and then we, want, we can see 
effects of you know the precision of your measurement and the mean value of your measurement on the symmetry energy. So in this analysis uh, done by uh, Wen Jie and I, uh, we use a miter model. You know, I showed you how we parameterize the epitomal state for symmetric miter and symmetry energy using these uh, uh, parameters. Uh, here we have the lower limits and the upper limits. You just randomly generate those parameters and then you construct the equivalent state at the beta equilibrium with charge neutrality for neutron stars. Then you use that uh, constructed equivalent state to show as an input in the TOE, the Coleman Oppenheimer equation, to calculate a theoretical radius. Then you compare your theoretical radius with the observed radius with the uncertainty here from observation uh, in the denominator here. So basically, you know, this is the so-called likelihood function. From here, then you can, uh, uh, you know, through a Markov chain monocolor process to generate many steps. At each step, you now, with each parameter set of equivalent state, what's the probability to reproduce the observational radius, okay? From uh, this kind of basic analysis, we can uh, infer the posterior probability distribution functions of uh, say J node, K node, the magnitude of uh, symmetry energy. Um, so uh, we here here uh, we have two uh, examples. One using the um, um, only the graviton wave data from the first neutron star uh, merger. This uh, is the, the prior distribution, and you see that the data, the radius data. You know, sinks, you know, really constrain very tightly the schoolness of the symmetric nuclear matter equation of state to be around minus 200 M years. But in the K node, the, the um, incompressibility of symmetric matter at normal density or the symmetry energy at normal density have very little effect. Both the slow parameter error and curvature of symmetry energy also get a significantly narrowed down compared to their initial uniform uh, distribution. Okay, so the peak here is around 50 MeV or so with, uh, with relatively large uh, width here. Now, the same parameter is the uh, schoolness of the symmetry energy, which characterizes the symmetry energy uh, around and above three times normal density. This parameter is not constrained by the observational data because the PDF peaks at the upper, upper limit. And if you artificially enlarge upper limit, this peak keeps going. It just, it indicates that the data we use do not constrain this parameter. As a result, you see that the, um, um, the symmetry energy at high density above two, three, I mean, above three times normal density still is very uncertain. It's not well constrained because this high density symmetry parameter is not constrained by the data we use. Well, uh, because the schoolness of symmetric new matter is tightly constrained, as a result, you see this 68% uh, uh, uncertainty range of symmetric nuclear equation state is you know, very tightly constrained compared to the initial prior uh, width, okay? Now, if you include the, the data from uh, nicer observation of this uh, canonical neutron star, uh, it doesn't affect much. One of the reasons is that the, the um, observed radius from nicer for this uh, neutron star has a large uncertainty range, okay? Including this uh, new data doesn't help much. Okay, so I mentioned that many people in the community have analyzed uh, the neutron star data uh, you know, uh, up to um, uh, about a year ago, there were 24 analyses of the new neutron star uh, data. Uh, they give you the IR parameters, you know, from, you know, th these are the results from different analysis. You know, if you um, trust every analysis and just take, a, you know, an average, you find that uh, this 24 analysis of neutron stars, if you, an uh, average error of about 58 MeV plus minus 19 MeV. This number is very consistent with the earlier systematics uh, you know, we have uh, uh, extracted based on mostly 
uh, analysis from terrestrial nuclear experiments. The KSIM parameters, the, school, uh, the curvature of symmetry energy was also extract, extracted from some of the analysis. Not all analysis neutron stars have extracted this parameter. Uh, we found 16 new analysis that give this um, uh, KSIM uh, uh, parameter. The average is about minus 107 MeV plus minus uh, 88 MeV. This number is also consistent with uh, what people studied earlier from uh, systematic you know, model calculation, comparing with all available uh, constraints at the time. Uh, so they are all quite consistent. Okay, so now let me uh, move on to, uh, to discuss more about the data from uh, NYSER. You know, many people are very excited by the uh, two observations made by the NYSER, the Newton Star Interior Combination Explorer on the International uh, Space Station. Uh, so this is the latest observation for this most massive neutron star having a mass of about you know, 0.28 uh, solar mass. Uh, the radius uh, still has a very large training range. This is the earlier observation from uh, uh, NYSER for, for that uh, canonical neutron star. You see that this has a very large training range. This is the um, uh, observation from uh, earlier X3 uh, data using uh, Chandra. The uh, graviton wave data give you an upper limit for the radius about 13.6 and the lower limit you know, is around nine uh, kilometers. So looking at this one, okay, you know, uh, comparing to predictions using different equivalent state, starting from the rather stiff equivalent state by Professor Sen uh, Hong in, in, uh, in Nankai, uh, to the you know very soft equivalent state by uh, Friedman and uh, Panda or Panda, you know, uh, we really can't say much about you know, uh, um, you know what we have learned from all the data. Okay, including the, the PRX2 rate. Okay, now here I want to, to make a two uh, comments. Why is that most of the analysis, besides this, uh, you know, forward prediction using uh, deep equations of state email prediction, uh, there are two kinds of inferences, you know, going backward, giving the data you want to infer the underlying equivalent state. Why is the spacing statistical analysis? In Bayesian analysis, people try to include all the data uh, as equally important. Of course, they have their own individual uncertainties, but you treat all the data you know, equally. Um, in this approach, because you are doing a statistical analysis, you're mixing up all the, the, you know, the data. Some of the interesting features get smeared out, okay? Uh, and I'm going to show you some examples. Another inversion, which is a direct inversion I'm also going to talk about, is that you know, inside of mixing all of, you know, taking, uh, uh, using all of them at once in a statistical way, you can just look at you know, what you can learn from the upper limit of the um, data from graphene waves uh, and the lower limit from uh, X-rays. Because you know, you, the graphene wave gives a lower limit here the um, X rays from uh, nitro give you a you know, lower limit here. But if you mix this point at this point, you just, uh, you know, smear uh, things out, okay? You, uh, you um, uh, don't learn um, much and about exactly, you know, which uh, observable constraint, which part of the equinox state. So I'm going to show you a couple of examples to illustrate this point, okay? Um, one example here is um, uh, um, from uh, Wenjie. Now we, we considered, uh, we consider equinox state with phase transition, considering uh, quark uh, matter equinox state using the constant speed of sound approach, and one just without the uh, phase transition using uh, all available uh, data. Uh, again, you know, you see the effect of phase transition on the, uh, the uh, school is parameter of symmetric matter. When you have um, phase transition, you want to, uh, to make the equivalent state of symmetric matter stiffer in order to counterbalance the softening of your equivalent state due to phase transition. And this uh, JSIM also get uh, modified a little bit. But if you look at the, the other prime, parameter, the K-node, uh, symmetry energy, and 
including the curvature of symmetry energy L, they don't change much, you know, without or without phase transition. And also the data, new data from uh, NICER, even include the most massive neutron stars, don't affect much about what you can expect from this basin analysis about the, the equivalent of state parameters. The reason is because in a strategic science, you just mix things up. Okay, and I'm going to, you know, to discuss how we can get rid of this problem. Another analysis using a similar approach in the basin analysis by the group at uh, Nanjing, Zijin San, Tian Tai, and Hebei uh, Kada. Uh, they um, considered also um, uh, in Quitong state uh, with phase transition uh, using uh, also the constant speed of sound approach, another one without phase transition. These are the PDF and the correlations of the parameters. Um, you know, they also found that the effect of this um, new measurement by NICER is relatively small. Uh, and they conclude that its error parameter is uh, constrained to be around 70 uh, plus 21 minus 18. This number is consistent with the systematics I have shown you and also consistent with the analysis uh, that uh, Wenjie and I uh, did. Okay, so we are quite uh, consistent. Okay, so now <clears throat> let me move on to another inversion approach. <clears throat> I said that it, uh, the statistical inversion using Bayesian approach, you know, mix things up. Um, you know, also it gives you some useful information, but it may uh, lose some information. Another approach that um, Zhang Aipe, uh, Yujun and I uh, uh, use in the last uh, few years is uh, to do, uh, you know, brute force approach, okay? You, uh, <clears throat> of course, this measure itself has limitations. We can only work in the three-dimensional high-density equivalent state space. Namely, we fix the low-density parameters at their most the probable values. And just wiring the three high-density parameters, this is J naught, K sim, and uh, J sim. So, uh, you know, this is by brute force, meaning that, uh, you know, you do a three loop over these three parameters. And so for a given uh, of the reason, you want to find all of necessary and service in the parameter sites that uh, you know, give you, can reproduce your observation. For instance, if you specify requiring, uh, uh, you, know, you, you, you get a maximum mass of 2.01 solar mass, okay? You see that every point on this green surface can give you exactly the same uh, maximum mass. And here you see that when you go to uh, KSIM, go to wire negative, or JSIM, go to wire negative, your symmetry energy becomes very soft, becomes super soft. Then the required uh, coolness of symmetric matter need to be higher, okay? Because you need to make your equilibrium state stiff enough to support a two mass, uh, two solar mass neutron star, right? Uh, this uh, pink vertical, almost vertical surface is a plane uh, on which every point will give you the same upper limit of the tidal polarizability. Okay, is an almost vertical because this tidal polarizability is all more or less independent of the symmetric equilibrium state. It's sensitive to the symmetry energy. If you change this number, the, the lambda to some other number, this will go this way. And we have uh, illustrated that. So for any given observation, uh, observable, you can find all combinations, okay, all equilibrium states that can give you the you know, required observational data. So this is a, a, a direct inversion approach. So now let's uh, look at here, you know, what we can learn from uh, this most massive neutron star with a mass of 2.08 uh, solar mass with this uh, uncertainty. This um, uh, data has been analyzed by two independent groups within the same uh, collaboration. This is from uh, Miller's uh, analysis. It gives you a, a radius of 13.7 plus its number minus this. Now, the larger upper limit of the radius is like a, you know 16 point some kilometer. It's just too big compared to the radius, upper limit of the radius from uh, LIGO. So this upper limit of the radius doesn't give us any new information, okay? However, if you mix that upper limit with the upper limit of uh, 
from uh, from LIGO, you diminish the importance of the, the LIGO observation. All right, the lower limit of this radius is uh, 12.2 kilometers from this uh, this one here. So now if you do the inversion, you see that this 2.01 maximum mass surface here, this uh, blue surface is the surface requiring this uh, two, uh, mass, 2.01 solar mass neutron star to have a radius of 12.2 kilometers. This is the, the radius. Now you can see the effect of measuring simultaneously the mass and the radius. Before we know the radius, you only uh, you know, require a mass like 2.01, you get this uh, green um, surface here. This caudality surface is a surface on which the speed of sound becomes the speed of light at the center density of the most massive neutron star. So this is the upper limit of your equilibrium state space. The cross line between the between caudality surface and the mass will give you the boundary of your symmetry energy. So before we know the radius, we would uh, you know, conclude that the lower boundary is along this line here. But now with this new radius measurement, the upper, I mean, the lower limit of the radius has been moved to this, uh, this uh, cross line here, okay? Um, so this is how we determine the, the lower boundary of high density symmetry energy, okay? It's now along this line here. The upper limit is determined by the cross line between the tidal polarizability from LIGO and the caudality surface. All you use the radius of 1.4 solar mass from uh, X-rays, okay, it's this uh, yellow uh, surface. It, I mean, it is very close to the tidal polarizability line. So this cross line here gives us the upper limit, and this cross line gives us the lower limit when we have both the mass and the radius but before we had this lower limit. So if we project that to the plane of J sim and K sim, we can have uh, you know, these uh, boundaries of the symmetry energy in this uh, plane. This is the earlier uh, constraint uh, when we only know the mass without knowing the radius. Now with this radius information, uh, okay, so for Miller, the radius information give you this uh, limit. The other group, the Riley's group from the same uh, uh, nicer collaboration did an independent analysis. If we, we use their radius, the limit is here. So you see that the, the nicer data itself has this systematic uh, uncertainty. I mean, the same data analyzed by two groups within the same collaboration give you these two different uh, lines, okay? So the data itself gives you a systematic uncertainty of this B, right? If you translate that into the symmetry energy at a function of density. In this upper window, we have the symmetry energy at a function of density. And then here we have the corresponding quartan fraction at the beta equilibrium in this neutron star. So before we had the radius information, we will conclude that the lower limit of symmetry energy at high density is along this green line here. Now, if we use the, the data from uh, Riley's group, you get this uh, lower limit. And the Miller's group will give you this uh, limit. The upper limit is coming from, you know, I told you the cross line between the tidal polarizability and the caudality. This is the upper limit. So this is the upper limit of symmetry energy at high density now. The lower limit depends on the radius uh, you use from, uh, uh, from nature, okay? Um, but you see that, uh, you know, despite of this uncertainty due to the, you know, uh, systematic error, the symmetry energy around two times normal density, okay, uh, is, you know, relatively, uh, you know, independent of this uncertainty. We have the upper uh, limit here, lower limit here. Okay, that itself is, is very uh, useful. So if we compare the symmetry energy at two times normal density, from different analysis of neutron stars over the last few years, okay? Um, many people in China contributed to this one. For instance, this is from uh, Zhang Yingxin's uh, group, and he's a collaborator in, in several places in China. Uh, from Liu Wen's uh, uh, group, from uh, Wenjie and I, uh, there are some changes, okay? 
from, uh, you know, for instance, Wenjie and I analyzed this one in 2019, now it's here. Why, why they are different? Because the mass of this most massive neutron star has been changing. In the preprints a few years ago, the mass was 2.17. And then when they published the paper, it becomes 2.14. And then last year, it becomes 2.08, okay? That's where we are, okay? If you do an analysis quick enough, you know, the, 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 the conclusion changed a little bit. But you know, more, the, the global average is roughly around 51 MeV, plus minus 13 MeV. The analysis from high ion collisions uh, done earlier, if are the symmetry energy at two time normal density around the, you know, uh, 60 MeV or so, all right? Um, well, uh, if we compare with some of the, uh, the advanced uh, latest microscopic uh, of initial uh, predictions, like from Cairo EFT, the symmetry energy at two time normal density around the 45 MeV from quantum on the color is about 46. And last week we had uh, two uh, papers uh, from uh, uh, Beijing, Tianjin. You, you see some uh, auto correlations in terms of models and authors. But the you know the, the symmetry energy at two time normal density is uh, very close, about 51, 53. The overall, okay, the symmetry energy at two time normal density is is around say 51 MeV. So okay, so this is already is, is a, you know very good progress. And this, uh, in particular, the model calculation give us some uh, guide, you know, guidance. Uh, we need to, to, you know, to uh, reduce the uncertainties from analyzing uh, more data in from both high band collisions and the neutron star uh, studies. Okay, I uh, mentioned briefly the causality surface. This is uh, the surface where the speed of sound uh, becomes the speed of light, uh, i.e. the central density of most massive neutron stars. Uh, this surface depends on the symmetry energy. When the symmetry energy becomes very soft, this is the maximum uh, mass you can support will you know, decrease, right? We are using, um, within the uncertainty range of the model parameters, we found that the absolute maximum mass of uh, neutron star, uh, this, um, you know, without consider uh, exotic uh, um, uh, component, it's about 2.4 solar mass. So this is the, uh, the number we found, about 2.4 solar mass. Several other groups uh, have analyzed, um, have extracted the maximum mass, uh, also by analyzing the neutron star data. This is the results back to 2019. Um, the maximum mass, you know, goes from say 2.15 to uh, say 2.35. Uh, Golden Beam and his uh, Japanese collaborators, using uh, considering a crossover between hydronic phase and quark phase, give you a um, maximum mass of about 2.35. This is the so-called uh, uh, MTOV. Okay, the MTOV is a maximum mass of a non-rotating neutron star. Okay, uh, I want to solve this because when we consider rotating neutron stars, this uh, uh, MTOV, the mass, maximum mass of non-rotating neutron star is an important starting point. Okay, so now let's move on uh, to uh, rotating neutron stars. Well, um, okay, so uh, this was um, um, you know, um, brought off by I mean, uh, by the observation by LIGO collaboration of this neutron star, uh, well, I have to correct, not in natural neutron star. This uh, event, the, uh, the binary merger event, one uh, object has a mass of 23 solar mass. The other one has a mass of 2.6 solar mass, but they, they don't know the nature, whether this one is a black hole or a neutron star. And this is very interesting because this 2.6 solar mass is right uh, in the gap, uh, the mass gap between uh, the minimum observed mass of a black hole and the maximum mass of observed neutron star, okay? So this has generated a lot of excitement uh, and interest. There was a you know, big flood of papers uh, published. 
we were also involved in the flood and uh, published a couple of papers on this, and I want to, to discuss uh, with you today. All right, well, um, well for, there are many possible mechanisms, okay? Uh, many. Uh, this, this LIGO paper has been cited like uh, 800 times, and uh, many of those citations were about possible uh, mechanisms to form such a system and about the nature of this uh, uh, minor, smaller component. There are many um, models. I want to give you two examples, two extremes. One example is uh, from uh, Professor Sen and Xu uh, Xin's uh, uh, group and their collaborators. Um, this one is an extreme is because uh, this model doesn't consider any extreme mechanism, even no rotations. Just, uh, you know, um, I mean, does uh, um, assuming neutron stars are made of neutrons, protons, uh, electrons, uh, muons, they use um, the modified uh, relative mean field model with um, uh, modified parameter sets based starting from NIL3. Then IR3 is well known uh, to have very stiff uh, equinox state, K, the K node, 272 MeV, the magnitude of symmetry energy is 37, the slope of symmetry energy like 119. These numbers are relatively high compared to, compared to the fiducial empirical values we know based on many analysis. So what they did is to um, introduce uh, density-dependent uh, uh, isovector coupling by adjusting the coupling parameters, they you know can reduce the symmetry, the slope of symmetry energy to you know 30, uh, 60, you know, uh, you know either parameter you can adjust. Then the resulting symmetry energy at the functional density you know can be much softer compared to the original NL3 predictions. Okay, so um, you know they can easily get. Uh, the maximum mass, the MQOV, to be above around 2.6 solar mass. They need to readjust the symmetry energy because they want they, they need to reproduce the radius of canonical neutron stars measured by the nicer collaborators. So this is a you know, nice example showing you that uh, you know there are models that can be uh, can accommodate such a massive neutron stars without uh, involving, uh, introducing uh, rotation or any uh, exotic uh, mechanism. Now, uh, John Ibu and I uh, look at another extreme, we consider the uh, uh, rotations because uh, it's very well known that uh, um, you know, by rotating neutron stars to its maximum frequency, the capital frequency, this is the frequency at which the mass on the surface of neutron star will be shown up, okay? The mass threading limit. Uh, at the mass threading limit at the capital frequency, the mass of neutron stars can be increased by about 20%, okay? And I mentioned to you that, yeah, you know, we, without considering rotation, you can already support neutron stars up to 2.4 solar mass. On top of that, if we include a 20% increase due to rotation, you can then rotationally support the uh, neutron stars. So we selected a site of equivalent state along the allowed you know, uh, boundaries. This is uh, one boundary here, the other boundary here, the corresponding symmetry energy boundaries uh, along this boundary here, this boundary here. This boundary is a soft uh, limit. This is a stiff limit. So we, we want to see what's the minimum frequency a neutron star has to have along this boundary in order to support rotationally a neutron star with 2.4 solar mass, okay? That's a question we studied. Uh, we used the well-known RNS code. So here's how you that if you have such uh, side of equivalent state, without the rotation, they have this kind of mass radius correlation. The maximum mass here is about 2.4. At the capital frequency, you can easily go above the 2.6 uh, limit. And this is test, uh, point, this uh, this uh, line here and this here, show you the frequency necessary to give you um, a mass of 2.5 uh, solar mass, okay? This is the number we want to find by, you know, analyzing, uh, calculating, uh, using different uh, equivalent states, okay? So on this uh, plot here, 
we have, um, okay, this plot, uh, it has the MPOV, the micro mass of a non-rotating neutron star at a function of the j sin parameter. This is characterized the symmetry energy around and above three time normal density. Okay, so this uh, is the uh, MPOV limit, right? Uh, it's above the uh, mass of, of the known um, non-rotating neutron star, okay? Now, this showed you uh, the necessary uh, minimum frequency you need to rotate neutron stars on this uh, curve to give you a 2.5 solar mass uh, neutron star, okay? So this will give you the minimum frequency necessary to support neutron star with a 2.5 times solar mass, okay? The lowest of frequency, okay, corresponding to MTO equal to 2.4. This one uh, is about uh, 971 hertz, okay? It's very high, but it's still only about uh, 0.5, uh, 0.6 times the Kepler frequency. So there is still, I mean, it's still far below the limit of the rotational limit, okay? Much less than the Kepler frequency. Uh, now, uh, the, the uh, currently known um, fast, um, you know, most rapidly rotating neutron star is uh, uh, the one that's rotating at 716 hertz. Okay, this is this, this neutron star here. No, uh, forgot this, um, uh, the coach, okay? This uh, most massive neutron star uh, observed, so I mean, the most, uh, rapid neutron star uh, of Earth so far has a frequency of 716 hertz. This neutron star, okay, uh, was discovered in 2006. Uh, they don't know the mass of this uh, neutron star, but when they discovered, when they made this uh, announcement and published this paper in Science, they made an estimate for the radius of this uh, neutron star, assuming uh, it has a mass of uh, 1.4 times solar mass. And assuming this frequency is the Kepler frequency, then the resulting radius is about 14.4 kilometers, okay? Then in this uh, paper, they uh, discussed that it, the radius they inferred is consistent with the radius of canonical neutron star between 11.5 and 13.6 kilometers, inferred by Steiner and uh, myself uh, in the same year. Now, so let me... Uh, Okay, use this opportunity to uh, do some uh, advertisement. Okay, and show you as an example how what we learned in nuclear physics can help uh, astrophysicists to understand their observations. So back in 2005, uh, when Liu Wen, uh, Zhiming, and I analyzed the isospin diffusion data from uh, Michigan State, we used the different uh, symmetry energy. We found that the data can be uh, well. Uh, described by using the symmetry energy around this uh, right uh, area with air parameter between 62 and 107, and, okay? Then Andrew Steiner and I uh, did a calculation for the mass and radius of neutron stars. We found that corresponding to this constraint, and I, I believe this was the first uh, constraint on the density dependence of symmetry energy. Around and uh, around the saturation density within a relatively large range. With this symmetry energy, we predicted a nuclear lim limit on the radius of canonical neutron star. Uh, it's about uh, between 11.5 and 13.6 kilometers. This range is consistent with what the people later extracted from analyzing uh, X rays uh, taken by Chandra and also consistent with uh, the, the nicer uh, data from this, uh, for this canonical neutron stars. I showed you earlier, the, the results, the radius inferred by different groups using the LIGO data is around you know, 12 kilometers with LIGO collaboration uh, come through that the upper limit is about 13.6 kilometers. It's uh, almost exactly the same as what uh, we inferred uh, earlier, okay? All right. So now there is a question. This neutron star of 2.5 uh, to 0.6 uh, solar mass, 
can be supported by the centrifugal uh, uh, force with the help of centrifugal force, namely rotational supporting. But it requires a frequency that's very high, even higher than the currently now and uh, most rapidly rotating neutron star. But people know that for the fastly rotating neutron star, there is the so-called R mode uh, instability. Um, namely, you know, this R mode can uh, generate uh, graphene waves. Then if um, the, um, the, the rate of uh, gravitational wave uh, radiation is faster than the damping uh, mechanism, so uh, you know, nuclear, uh, neutron neutron scattering or electron electron scattering, then uh, the neutron star, the fastly spinning neutron star, may collapse into a black hole. Okay, so uh, one uh, well about uh, well, ten years ago already, when uh, Bill Hua came to visit me uh, during the summer, we uh, calculated, studied how the symmetry energy may affect the stability uh, of uh, our mode of oscillations by calculating the time scale of gravitational wave radiation through R mode and um, the damping time scale through uh, electron electron scattering, assuming the cross of neutron stars are all uh, solid. Okay, so um, when the time scale, I mean, when this goes uh, faster than this one, then uh, the, um, the neutron star will be unstable, right? The stability, you can find the, the critical uh, frequency by setting these two time scales equal to each other, okay? That's um, what we did. Then uh, you can find the critical uh, frequency uh, at a functional temperature um, in, this, uh, in this plane. This, uh, this, is the, uh, this here is so-called um, R mode instability window. In this region here, the neutron star will be uh, unstable due to this R mode uh, oscillation. This boundary between the unstable region and stable region depends on the slow parameter of symmetry energy. So for instance, this is R equal to 25 MeV, this is 105 MeV, okay? These are from this low mass X-ray uh, binaries. Some of them are you know, here above this 105 uh, MeV, indicates that you know, the, the symmetry energy has to be, I mean, the error has to be smaller than 105, okay? So this tells you that the boundary between unstable, stable region uh, depend on the symmetry energy uh, you use in your model. So go back to this, um, uh, this, uh, uh, this event here uh, and uh, uh, its minor components. Um, Zhou Xia and uh, Liang did a calculation uh, using, well, we started from uh, 33 uniform equation states uh, calculate using the same effective interaction from the surface all the way to the core, okay? Um, and then, you know, run those equation of state through all um, currently known filters constrained on the equation state. At the end, only five of them uh, survived. Using these five equation states, you can see that uh, they have this uh, MPOE, this is the maximum mass this equation state can support without involving uh, rotations, okay? Um, this is the corresponding Kepler frequency of these uh, uh, neutron stars. This is the minimum frequency necessary to rotationally support a 2.5 solar mass neutron stars, okay? Now, this is our mode of unstable region. This is a lower region here. Um, so if you plot this minimum frequency at the horizontal line here, you see this is unstable region. Then in order for the data neutron star to be stable, your temperature has to be lower than this number here. So this is the reading allowed. What it says is that yeah, this uh, 2.5 solar mass minor component can be R mode stable as long as its uh, temperature is less than a critical temperature about the 10 to the seventh uh, Kelvin. Okay. Now the the low mass actually uh, uh, binaries have a temperature around the 10 to the 8th uh, K. So it's, um, it's cooler than that. But some of the known old uh, cold neutron stars have a temperature around 10 to the 6th K. So it seems that, uh, um, you know, this R mode instability shouldn't be a concern, okay? 
you, you know, you can safely rotate those neutron stars in this region as long as their temperatures are relatively low. Okay. So, um, well, okay, I'm uh, running out of time. Let me uh, come to my uh, summary. I have a, a few uh, summary slides to, to show you. Um, okay, I've given uh, three uh, seminars. Uh, during this three seminar, we discuss uh, uh, several questions related to the nature of symmetry energy, how we can probe it, what are the effects of symmetry energy on neutron stars and uh, uh, strong field of gravity. It seems, okay, at least on this picture, the symmetry energy is well within reach, but uh, you know, as you probably have, uh, have seen, there are many uh, unknown, um, you know, there are many issues that we don't know how to uh, resolve. We need to work harder. Um, okay, so I mentioned that um, uh, in order to, to resolve some of the issues, we need to have a high precision X-ray measurement. If you, you know, read this measurement with very small uncertainty, and this is the, in, in the proposal of the EXTP, uh, like pro, by Professor Zhang, uh, in, in, uh, in, um, uh, at the approach, there are also several other proposals uh, for high precision X-ray measurement. This, uh, this new measurements will be uh, uh, very sm small, hopefully will be precise enough to distinguish you know, the GR prediction from the scalar tensor theory prediction for the mass uh, radius correlation, uh, in particular for these massive uh, uh, neutron stars. Okay, now let me uh, give you the, just one minute or so, uh, the last uh, uh, slide basically, uh, about the recent calculation about the effects of symmetry energy on the high frequency uh, graviton waves from the merger phase of uh, neutron star uh, murders. Okay, we discuss the tidal polarizability during the inspiral phase when the two neutron stars are approaching. The neutron star will be deformed due to the graviton field due to the other one. After their merger, they generate high frequency graviton waves. And there has been several papers showing that the predation of this high frequency graviton waves it is sensitive to the nature of hydron quark phase transition. But this uh, two uh, uh, people now at uh, Princeton, they saw that this is a high frequency graviton waves. This is the string amplitude at front of time, uh, depend on the slow parameter error you use in constructing your equilibrium state. Um, this is the example for a binary with the same mass assuming each neutron star had a radius of 12 kilometers. They also saw that this so-called characteristic uh, frequency of graph waves has this peak, that uh, location of the peak has uh, appreciable dependence on the error parameter uh, you know, when used. So uh, in order to study you know, the phase transition uh, and other you know, interesting physics, one need to know uh, the, the symmetry energy, uh, even you know, this error parameter. Okay, um, so we need, uh, but once graphene wave detectors that can detect this high frequency uh, graphene waves going far beyond the current uh, LIGO uh, detector. So uh, now from, uh, from Earth to, to heaven, uh, we have seen that a significant progress has been made in constraining symmetry energy below twice the saturation density. To uh, further constrain the high density symmetry energy, we really need a multi messenger approach, including uh, astrophysical observations, theoretical experiments, theories, and uh, you know you and your money. Uh, of, you know we have some of the facilities under construction: uh, Einstein uh, Bayesian detector, uh, HIF in, in Guizhou, um, you know various high precision X-rays. Of course, you know, we, we need a series. So um, in order to uh, reach uh, our goal, we need uh, you know, people with different expertise, you know, astrophysical theories, money body theories, high ion reaction dynamics, uh, uh, gravitational uh, theories. We need uh, you know, uh, transport of neutrons, protons, pions, uh, money, uh, several. Uh, but once the facilities are under uh, construction, 
and um, to uh, you know, reach our goal, we need uh, collaborations. Well, thank you very much uh, for your attention. I'll be happy to discuss any questions uh, you may have. Thank you. 好，谢谢保安的报告啊，保安这个报告非常精彩，特别是讲了这个我们极小到极大之间，这中国这个之间的联系，通过核物质的这个状态方面，特别是对称能，能够对这个天文的这些现象进行非常好的这个 constrain。那么，呃，这个大家现在可以有问题的话，可以提出来，哎，也可以快讨论。这个网上可以举手，假如有问题啊。八，你那个前面讲到这个相变 （phase transition） 这个、这个、这个，呃，就是两种比较，对吧？用贝叶斯这个这个算法来进行那个，那个主要的这个相变跟没有相变的主要的差别，你说的观测上观测量上是一个什么？什么什么什么结果 ？OK， 我我的结果是比较 negative， 就是说，嗯，因为因为现在观察量很少，你只有这个 mass radius，OK，、嗯 okay? 呃，基本上就只就就,就这两个东西，这个这个两个 observables 啊啊 degenerate with respect to equinoctial state， meaning that you can have all kind of equinoctial state， you know without a wave phase transition， without without high prongs， you know strings whatever， you you can All reproduce, you know, the same observational data. So we have this、um, unfortunate degeneracy, you know, duality. Pretty much, you know, like、uh, even、uh, you know, at RIC, in, in your experiment at, at RIC, but always people can saw that the all observations or most observations, okay,、uh, can be、uh, explained, you know, without in, in, in including phase transitions. Okay, I think the situation at RIC is even better than. Uh, than what we have in in neutron stars, okay? Because they are in at RIC, you have so many different kind of、uh, observables, and you can control what you you know reaction you can do, what matter you can create. In neutron star physics, you know you just、uh, have you know few neutron stars being observed. You only know its mass, and some of the mass are now you know more precise than others, and then the radius, which is very poorly、uh, determined with large uncertainties. So what we we found is that here,、uh, you know. With or without phase transition, the parameters of the equinoctial state you extracted are all consistent with currently known constraints from theoretical experiments. So、uh, the current observation cannot exclude anything. That, that's my.、Mm. I mean, that's our conclusion. Kind of negative. 好的，谢谢。Uh, 好，魏平，刘魏平。嗯嗯，谢谢保安啊，这个报告这个。就是讲的很清楚，而且很清晰的，跟我们说了一下怎么样把这个引力波的这个探测跟咱们的这个 EOS 就给 link 起来。虽然还有很多不太懂，但但至少是有个系统的了解哈。呃，我有个问题就是说，呃，我们怎么样去应付这种不确定的这种物理？你看，咱们现在是 E EOS 核物理实验和理论对它的支持。是很是很宽泛的，然后从引力波探测那边呢，实际上它也是一个很初步的一个探测。那么这两个很宽泛的东西堆在一起呢，导致你刚才说的很多事情呢都是都是定不下来。那么我觉得可能能就是我我觉得你 conclusion 那部分呃挺好的，就是说比如说从观测的部分，比如双南的那个 X 射线，它假设是像它 claim 的那样能够局限的那么好。包括你刚才 propose 的，如果说我们引力波将来看那个高频的部分去去看它那个 o s c i l l a t i n g 的话，能够去现的更好。那那当然从这个观测的角度呢，能能就是能够给它那个有一个更好的 shrink， 这样的对咱们的这个啊、呃、EOS 对对中微呃对中子星的有一个更好的局限。呃，我我问的问题是。从咱们核物理的实验的角度，你后来提到了尼卡，提到了这个，提到 have， 怎么样去就是怎么样去使劲因为我们每次讨论这个中外的核物理实验的 proposal， 我们也缺乏一个像人家那个粒子物理那样一个特别高大上的一个物理的 motivation， 都是比较比较平淡的 motivation。就是说，比如说
，咱们举例来说，我我们重离子的装置，到底是需要稳定数的高能量、高高强度和一个 multi parameter 探测器呢，还是要我们尽量去做一个比较稀有同位素，就是尽量的那个 I I I S B 越高越好呢？这这个如果能给我们建议的话，这这个是非常的那个 helpful 的。就就可能我这问题比较就发散。我我我，对我知道这个问题。这个问题实际上就是说不光是国内，就整个就世界上那个很，嗨片肯定都在讨论这个问题。就是说哪哪，就是你要测什么的嗨片，肯定究竟要测什么东西才才能把我这个嗨片这 simulation energy 能能定下来？这这个问题就是我们做很多 simulation， 做很多事情都有很多。现在问题很多 model dependent， 因为你你 high density 以后形成，尤其 neutron rich matter 形成之后里边。它这个 get excited， 这个 degree of freedom 很多，就像 neutron star 的 core 里面是什么东西不知道 ，OK， 所以就很多 model dependence 在在这里面，没有一个 unique，OK，、okay? 就是没有一个 smoking gun， 就说我测到这个东西能说什么事情，现在没有这样一个东西，嗯嗯，呃，所以就说，呃，从呃呃怎么说呢，最好能找到就是 something directly coming from high density phase。Without, <笑> without it, uh, 就是 suffering 那个 final state interaction. 我们说 pion, pion 问题是这个 pion strong interaction， 这个 final in state interaction 太多，就很难 trace back to the high density phase. 那那个 uncertainty 太大。假如一个我我不知道了，比如说像做做跨光 plasma 那个 iric， 你可以说找找那个 dielectron, OK, photon dielectron. 对对对对。High density， 或者是 jets, OK, 那个 jets. 现在人做这个，比如说是那个 neutron star merge 从那个这个 gamma ray burst 或者 something like this， OK， 然后、mm-hmm. 呃，就是说类似这种，包括 neutron star， 我现在说这个 neutron star 现在 constraint 是这个 below two times normal density， 因为这个 neutron star 的 radius 从那个 model calculation 能发现那个 radius 主要 sensitive to 这个 equation state around two times normal density， OK， high density part、mm-hmm. 它那个 radius 根本不 sensitive。所以的话，做做天体的最好能找这个 direct probe directly from the core of neutron star， 那个 maybe neutrino。哎，我我知道这个 Japanese， 呃 ，several Japanese scientists have looked at the the neutrino flux okay?、Um, 嗯。OK， 嗯 ，OK， 呃，这个也包括这个 gravity wave from 那个 merger phase。但他那个，比如比如这个文章，这个文章就是说有一个问题，就是说我。我给他们用的 code 是这个，从那个 Frankfurt 和这个 University of Illinois 做这个 general relativity hydrodynamic simulation code 非常复杂。我看不到，就就看他的文章看不到为什么。OK， 为什么这个这个这个这个 frequency high frequency 这个 stream amplitude 会 sensitive to 这个 slope of neutron energy？ 会为什么有这样这样的影响？他的 paper 也没讲，就我没有一个 critical intuition 能够简单 picture 能 explain 为什么 peak of 这个这 gravity wave。在 merger phase 会有这种 sensitive to symmetry energy、嗯。按我的理解，嗯、这个是这个 L 不会影响这个 symmetry energy at high density， 这会影响是、呃、这个这个 mer 这个 in spiral phase。Suppose 这个 high density 应该 sensitive， 比如说 symmetry energy at two three times 呃、uh, normal density， 但他们 calculation 他不他、嗯、没有 characterize high density symmetry energy， 所以就是就是类似这种东西，嗯、呃，有有很多问题。但是就是说，这个需要我们去去继续去 investigate 做 detailed calculations。所以就是不管是做 neutron star 或者做 high energy collision， 都有这样一个问题 ：what what are the most you know、uh, direct collision probe of this you know unknown、yeah, yeah. physics? That's something we all need to you know to to work on. So、um, I I think this、uh, you know this is truly I emphasize this word truly okay because I think it is saying that. We are now in the multi-messenger, you know, era of astronomy. You know,、mm-hmm. we have gravity waves,、mm-hmm. con- you know, counterpart, all kind of things. But in order to 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 really consume the symmetry energy or equation state in general, you really need to include all of that. Okay, from astrophysics, theoretical experiment, you know, everything、mm-hmm. has to do really comprehensive analysis. But、uh, you know, one thing I want to to encourage people is that okay, you know, the gravity waves is so weak, okay, so rare. Mm-hmm. But they found it,、yeah. and they they use that one、yeah. to confirm the new radio from neutron star. Okay, when we predict、mm-hmm. the signature of symmetry energy in high energy collision, it's around you know fifteen twenty percent. Some people say, well,、wow, only ten twenty percent. You know, we don't care, and it's it's so uncertain. But you know, think about it. How hard it is to extract that gravity wave signal, and、uh, you know, look at this ten percent effect. Okay, you know, if、mm-hmm. you have the money, the drive. 
to do the, that kind of physics, you know, you, you, you can repeat the experiment, okay? It's much easier than, than mm -hmm. detecting gravitational waves happening, you know, mm -hmm. from the collision of possible collision of some neutron star somewhere, you know, a long, long time ago, okay? So, um, you know, we, we, I think uh, we, it's very hopeful we can uh, finally constrain the neutron state by the high density, um, high ideal spin asymmetry. Thank you. 比较好的这个结论 you know, Dali's decay, many channels, all included, okay? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We just look at the earlier phase neutron proton prime showing uh, yeah. to you know, this look into, it's just to find the rare probe, okay? Uh, yeah. The rare probe, the benefit is that it doesn't suffer the final state interaction, but it's very sensitive to the high density yeah. semi-trial energy. Yeah. 可能比如说牛肠、火肠或者是伊塔或者是就是伊塔、伊塔、伊塔、伊塔、伊塔、伊塔、伊塔、伊塔、伊塔、伊塔、伊塔、伊塔、伊塔、伊塔、伊塔、
谢谢，嗯，好，看看其他老师还有什么问题。啊，中州，请。好，啊，保安报告很精彩 ，PPT 也很漂亮，讲的很全面啊。那个保安，你在计算里边呀、啊，用到你提到 f i x f o x 一五种一，能够解释一下，你加了一种新的相互作用。第五种力，我看你。好 ，OK，OK，OK，OK，OK，、oh, oh, 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 okay, 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 okay. 你多解释一点。哦，这个这个是呃呃，就说这个 story 很很很很很很很长了。这个嗯，就是呃 ，modified gravity theory， 就是 you know if you look at the federal review D in every volume， OK， you have you know several tens of papers on modified gravity theory。So you know there is a long history for people to develop、uh,。Modified、uh, gravitational series. This um um the the uh this is so-called non-Newtonian gravity. I think it's、uh, the leader of of this series now. Uh, I'm at the Wisman Institute in、uh, in Israel. Um, so um there there I mean you know in China there are people doing I mean in Wuhan and、uh, Guangzhou they they do this torsion balance、uh, experiment right to to test. The modification of gravity at a certain distance, right? They are setting, you know, limits on on gravity between two masses. Okay, that's using total balance. Now, they theoretically, you know, based on some earlier work, okay, people are saying that,、um, okay,、uh, the two particles may、uh, exchange an additional a new、uh, boson. Okay, the the proposed this is called spin one、uh, neutral、uh, gauge boson, the so called U boson. Which can、um, can、uh, you know transmit、uh, mediate this、uh, interaction, and this U boson actually can also、uh, it, you know mediate interaction between、uh, dark particles. So you you introduce this additional term, you know, this additional term here in the potential corresponding to the modification of this power in in, in R in your one or R square law. Okay, um, and now this Fujita. Idea, he said, "This because because you that you write neutron star that that total action, okay? You have this matter part, the gravity part. You can、uh, you know you can、uh, put that、uh, modification for gravity as if you are modifying the equation of state, okay? So he was saying that you can keep using the G R without modifying gravity, but introduce an additional term in your nuclear matter equation of state as if you have a new particle." That's a proper, you know, mediating additional in interaction. That's so called a fifth force, right?、Uh, so you know, you do a just you know two particle row one, row two, the interaction, you know, calculate corresponding energy density. Okay, this was done by Fisher and his collaborator from Russia and、uh, Slovakia. Okay,、um, you know, you can you can get the additional pressure due to the exchange of this U boson. Okay. Uh, with the mass of one over this,、uh, you know, this U is related to the mass of the U, U boson. Okay, it will give you an additional term like this. You put this additional term into your normal equation of state and see what kind of coupling constant you need to、uh, reproduce the, you know, the, the the observational mass of a neutron star. Okay, it's just like you have a new. New term, and this term one can saw that it have little effect on finite nuclei. It only is important for massive、uh, neutron stars. Thank you. Thank you. 好，看看哪位老师还有问题。各位专家还有问题吗？嘿嘿，这张照片有意思啊。Okay, so this is kind of summary of my talk. We talk about the southern correlation between neutron protons. We we argued about the question whether C B two energy is stiff or so, and you know whether you need dark matter or modified gravity. 嗯。第五中立 ，OK， 好的，那这样就是暂时大家没有这个问题的话，我们今天的报告呢也到这儿了。那么特别感谢啊，李宝安教授给了我们这个三讲的系列报告。
讲讲述了这个对称能力这个重要性，对这个我们传统核物理跟这些天体相关的这个两个方面的这个结合。那么，呃，暂时呢，这个李宝安的教授这个系列讲座呢到这为止。那么我们这一次感谢宝安教授精彩的报告。那么也欢迎呢，下个礼拜我们计划。邀请印第安纳大学的廖军功教授呢，给我们一系列的报告。好，谢谢大家。好，会议到这里为止。谢谢，嗯，谢谢各位。好，再见。好，谢谢保安。嗯，好，再见，龙总。谢谢，谢谢，拜拜。谢谢大家。OK， 拜拜。再见，再见。